Good morning. Can everybody, or I, I guess I'm on. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. My name is Jack Hody with the Hody Group. Uh, you Marlin people know who I am. And thank you customers of Marlin for joining us. Um, our goal is to make this quick, informative and fun. I, can, I think fun, uh, as fun as it can be. So um, this is how it's gonna uh, begin. Rachel Byerly of the Hody Group will speak about uh, the sustainable products uh, and the sustainable nature and how it fits Chicagoland. Um, when Rachel's through, Matt Murray, who is the regional manager, all of our boss actually, he'll tell you about features and benefits uh, and the direction of Anchor, uh, which is important because uh, of some of the specialty packaging they do. And then I'll finish up with uh, the uh, stuff that I think important to you as operators in the field. So without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Rachel Byerly. And Rachel, take it away. Oh, Matt's going first. Did this change since yesterday? Hey guys, it's Matt Murray. Sorry, first mistake. Thank you, Jack. Hello, everybody. Hello, all Trimark Marlin sales reps. Uh, miss you guys. Appreciate um, everybody getting on, the customers. We know that you're very busy, and hopefully this is going to be informative for you, and we're excited to have this time to talk to you. So I um, want to talk a little bit about uh, Anchor Packaging and who we are um, in, in the plastic uh, packaging industry. You know, we're the leaders in quality. Uh, leaders in performance and innovation. So let's dive into what that means um, to you. So when we talk about quality, we control all aspects of the manufacturing. We're proud to say that we're made in the USA. Um, we control the raw materials aspect of it. We control the manufacturing and the finished goods. Um, so all in all, we, we control the quality so you know that when that product arrives to you that it's in great condition. Performance. And we believe our product is a superior performance. And the details on that is that, you know, our products are microwavable, um, heat tolerant up to 230 degrees. Also, they're dishwasher safe. But really important about our products is this lid fit. We know that home delivery, food transportation is, is obviously um, a, a big deal right now. It's very important that the lid fit in transportation holds. Um, there's a lot of lid fits out there that are, are inferior, but where we set ourselves apart is in that nature. So I'm sure everybody's familiar with Gladware, Tupperware. We've been making that product for the past 20 years. Uh, we've taken that technology and translated it into our food service packaging. So what you have there is a superior perimeter lid fit. And I'm sure every, I think everybody has a sample of this. This is our 20 ounce incredible, you know, great for, for size, for pastas and soups. What I've done here is I put some water in here and you can see um, that there's no leaking. So you can feel confident that when the, you're putting the product in there, that if it does tip over in transit, that it will not leak, no, no messy spills. So superior lid fit. And again, we like to call it a Tupperware lid fit. Uh, the next topic I spoke about innovation. Uh, we lead the industry in innovation when it comes to packaging. If there's a need in the market, um, we develop it. I'm sure everybody's familiar with this uh, clamshell. 17 years ago, we introduced this to the market. Uh, extremely popular, very a core item now in today's home delivery and uh, pick up and take out. But everybody loves the hinge, um, has nice venting to it, and also there's a uh, uh, anti-fog in the lid that helps dissipate the condensation. Also, this wonderful perforated lid. So what that'll do is that obviously it, you take it apart and you're ready to eat. Put the lid underneath the base and ready to dine. So we'll keep on going on innovation. Right now in the industry, you know, everybody's trying to figure out how do you keep fries hot and crispy for the home? You know, I'm sure as a consumer, um, you've ordered fries and they're soggy and not, crisp and not crispy. And I'm sure as an operator trying to figure out what's that best packaging, what does that look like? Well, we have the solution for it. It's Chris Food Technologies. Um, uh, we're the first to market with that. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic product. Um, if you are doing anything in fried food, um, hamburgers, fries, 
this is the perfect container for you. So it is designed to get your food from the operator to the home in a 30 minute window to be hot and crispy. Um, it has all the aspects of our product as far as anti-fog, fantastic leak closure, um, but let's take a deeper dive into how come this works. So everybody's familiar with that. So next slide, Nick, please. So we're taking a closer look at it. As you see there, um, what does venting do? You know, venting helps exhaust that moisture. And so there's multiple vents on the top. So we're exhausting all that moisture. If moisture's entrapped, it gets onto the food, it makes it cold, and then it gets soggy. So multiple vents. Um, also, we have uh, cross fence, which creates a crosswell. So if you see on the side here, there's more venting. And what that does is that when that moisture escapes from the top, it creates a draw. And so think of a convection oven. What does a convection oven do? It circulates hot air to cook the food. It's the same concept. So when that moisture is exhausting from the top of the lid, it's creating a draw and creating a crosswell. Um, also, you see that deep root base, it's very important. It keeps the food above any residual liquid um, or grease. So if you have a hamburger in there, it's gonna, it, the, the bun will not be soggy. And then anything that's, that's touching that base will be hot and crispy. All very, very well thought out. I also like to point out too, is that people will ask, well, if they're stacking on top of each other, will the venting still happen? So if you look here, See these, these stacking hubs here, when they're stacked together with the same container, they'll continue to vent. So through and through, Chris Foods container, from the restaurant to the home in 30 minute delivery, your food will be hot and crispy. Uh, no one else has anything like it in the market um, and we love to, to meet with you and show it to you. So we'll go on to the next slide. So these are very telling. So we've, we've tested this at the multi-unit level, the single unit level, et cetera. So this is our 10 by nine container, which I'm showing you right now. And thermal images, this is at the store location. So you can see a nice concentration of heat there. So there it begins. So the next will be, next slide is at a 20 minute interval. And you can see that, remember I talked about the cross flow, you know, keeping that food hot, convection oven, um, like a convection oven. You see that in blue, that air being drawn in. So venting's happening, the food, is air circulating around the food, um, the food's raised above any liquid or grease. And by the time the next, the final slide, you'll see it's still a wonderful concentration of heat there as well. So that customer's experience, they experience the same um, as they would if they were dining in the restaurant as they would at home. So a completely happy customer, and you're gonna get a, re a return order. They're gonna be calling you again because they had such a great experience. The fries were crispy and the bun was not soggy. So the next slide is just gonna show you, so you know, we're talking about fries. This is our uh, newly introduced fry baby. Um, so we've tested this with any type of fry, um, fresh, Pringle cut, you name it. Um, they all fit in here. It's a nice six by three size and it's, it's great for chicken fingers, egg rolls, et cetera. So 14 items in line. We'd love to come out and meet with you. Look at your menu, um, look at your menu mix, um, size up what would work for you, and then perform a test. So very excited about Chris Foods. And again, we're willing to test this. Uh, we have a lot of success when, when we test this product and put it in the hands of the customers um, and the operators. So without further ado, uh, thank you for your time. I'm gonna introduce our next guest speaker, Rachel Byerly, and she's gonna talk about why plastic is a green choice. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time and your attention. I'm uh, really happy to be here today. Um, so as Matt stated, I'm going to be talking uh, about the green footprint as it relates to anchor packaging. Um, and eco-friendly packaging options. Um, as we know, sustainability is gaining a lot of focus in food service um, right now, and the goal to become eco-friendly is picking up momentum. Oftentimes, plastic is overlooked, and it's not thought of as a green option, but I'm here to explain why it is a green option in our market, um, and particularly as it is uh, 
compared to compostable or alternative products. First slide, please, Nick. Okay, so fact or fiction, biodegradable compostable products are the preferred environmental solution because waste simply biodegrades in the landfill. So we hear a lot of uh, terms about biodegradable and compostable. Um, the answer is fiction. Hopefully you all got that right, but if you didn't, now you'll, now you'll, you'll understand. Um, nothing biodegrades in a landfill because nothing is supposed to break down and biodegrade in a landfill. Next slide, please. Okay, so 82%, the plastic manufacturing process uses 82% less energy than alternative compostable type products. So the energy going into manufacturing plastic is far less than the energy that's being used to create the compostable products that we're oftentimes uh, focusing on as a green option. Next slide, please. Plastic containers also use less than 3% of the fresh water necessary to make pulped containers. So not only are we using less energy to create these the plastic anchor packaging containers, we're also using less fresh water. It takes 91% less energy to recycle a pound of plastic than to recycle a pound of paper. So that is significant if you think about it. Um, paper products that are used in packaging are recyclable just as um, anchor packaging plastic material is but it's requiring far more energy to recycle the paper products than our plastic containers. According to the EPA, reuse and reduce is the preferred methods, are the preferred methods of waste management. Um, then shortly after that comes uh, recycling, composting, incinerating, and landfilling. So Anchor's rigid polypropylene products are designed to be used over and over again. You can send your food home with your customers in the polypropylene containers and be certain that it's going to stand up to reusing at home. Um, and this is, you know, this is a, a great feature with our containers because they're not just um, single use and then throw it away or single use and, and put it in the recycling bin. Um, they're dishwasher safe and microwavable. It's a, it's a perfect to-go container for last night's leftovers. So it can be reused at home and reheated in the microwave. It's um, a fantastic feature. Making or calling a product biodegradable or compostable has no inherent value if the product, after use by the customer, does not end up in a waste management system that uses the biodegradability and compostable features. So, I know we love the idea of, or, or people dining out love the idea of compostable packaging or compostable dining uh, products, but in Chicago, in our market, there really is not a commercial composting facility available. So that compostable material is not being composted. If it is thrown away in the trash, it's not breaking down, it's not biodegradable, um, it really requires a compostable um, uh, feature that, um, that ends up in the um, commercial composting facility. So it's not, it's not ending up uh, useful in this market. Okay, so to talk a little bit about the features of anchor packaging, um, Matt covered a lot of what uh, the strengths are in our actual packages, um, what you know, the raw materials are. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit about how uh, our raw materials compare to that of the compostable alternative products and why, um, why our features are more uh, eco-friendly. So anchor packaging is, we, uh, some of our containers are made from polypropylene. 
Um, the polypropylene containers are heat tolerant. Matt covered a lot of this. Um, so these are just a reminder of, of the features, um, but to highlight that they are reusable and recyclable. Um, we also have the ability to use, and then if you could advance next, calcium carbonate as renewable mineral additives. Um, so the calcium carbonate when added to the anchor packaging reduces the petroleum base by up to 40%. Um, it, it's a great um, additive to again, make the container a more eco-friendly option. And then with the, the calcium carbonate additive, it has the exact same features as the, as the polypropylene that we listed. You know, the heat tolerance doesn't change, the lid fit doesn't change, still ventable, still anti-fog. Um, everything stays the same. It just creates a, a smaller um, carbon footprint. All right, next slide, please, Nick. All right, so our other um, main type of packaging material with anchor packaging is PET. Um, this would be most recycled plastic. Um, it's, and, and again, um, Matt covers some of this, but it's high clarity. It's great for cold food applications, frozen applications. Um, and this is an accepted material for curbside recycling. It's also domestically manufactured. So that's a plus. We know exactly what's going into these containers and there's no mystery. Okay, Nick. All right, so to compare um, with compostable products, these are plant-based agricultural materials place additional demand on food, energy, land, and water. So we know that they're plant-based. That's, you know, that's all fine and good, um, but it places additional demand on the food, energy, land, and water. The heat tolerance is lower. It's 200 degrees. They're single use. Um, there's oftentimes closure issues. With uh, hotter temperatures, the strength is compromised. There can be condensation, the food integrity is lost a little bit in that packaging style. Um, and again, we don't have commercial composting facilities. So it, there, it really is not, um, it becomes a disposable. It's, it's not really a green option in this market. Okay, please advance, Nick. All right, this is just a, kind of an image to show you um, a comparison between the, the compostable containers and our anchor packaging plastic, um, pulped versus plastic energy consumption. As we talked about, it's 82% less energy than pulped containers. Okay, next slide, please. And this to just illustrate exactly what the difference is in water consumption to manufacture these products. Um, if you see the comparison here, it takes far more water, fresh water to make the pulped containers than it does our anchor packaging. All right. So the end of packages life. Um, what happens to your food packaging after this meal is done and, and, and it's, you know, brought home? possibly um, reused in anchor packages, uh, an anchor packaging example, but um, there are a number of municipalities in the U.S. that offer curbside recycling. 60% um, of all U.S. municipalities, in fact, and 86% of the largest municipalities in the U.S. collect polypropylene curbside. Um, number one PET and number five polypropylene is what um, anchor packaging uses to manufacture their containers. Both of those are recyclable. Um, PET is, I mean, that's widely accepted and so is number five po polypropylene. Um, and then the polypropylene is what we talked about as being reusable. Um, that can be microwaved and reheated at home um, as, as a carryout option. Polypropylene uses the least solid waste by weight and can be recycled into many applications. Okay, so just to kind of recap, um, anchor products are reusable and recyclable curbside in our market, whereas compostable materials um, really are not. 
Um, the plastic manufacturing process uses 82% less energy than alternative and compostable type products and less water. So it really is um, the most eco-friendly and the best green option as far as packaging goes um, that's available to us here in, in uh, the Midwest. So uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, it's been really nice to meet all of you uh, virtually. I'd really like to meet in person and to discuss your packaging program. Um, so please uh, organize a meeting through your, your Trimark Marlin rep. Um, and I look forward to meeting with you all. So I would like to introduce Jack Hody as the next speaker. Okay, so what am I doing now? I'm good. Uh, turn on your video. Hello, everybody. So I'm the guy that started this, uh, screwed it up with the order, but now I got it straight and I'm last, <laughs> rightfully so. So thanks for all being here. Uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to talk to the operators specifically, and I want, I want to bring up the point that was there ever a more important time that you can remember in your life to consider and strongly consider quality packaging. Um, the title of this is something to do with packaging being our lifeline uh, because it's what we have to count on for revenue. Uh, the reasons being obviously the pandemic. Uh, nobody within your organization is making decisions as to how many people you can get in your dining room, if it can be open, and how long it can be open. The only way that you have a steady source of, in, of, uh, of revenue is by carryout packaging. Um, so might now be the time to really consider getting the food to your customer in the manner it was intended to be eaten and to make a more enjoyable experience I think our end goal, everybody, is repeat carry out business because that equals repeat revenue, okay? Um, and I hope everybody uh, who in the past, who, who had a very busy dining room and turned your restaurant four or five times a day and you didn't really consider carry out packaging to be as necessary as it is to have a great dining room, I hope you reconsider the, the importance of packaging now. Uh, Nick, if you go to that one slide I asked you to go to. Okay, so I think uh, Matt had this up earlier and I, I don't know if Rachel did or not, um, but this is a, you know, it, it uses the, the term billions. Oh, that's kind of scary to me, but it's a good scary because it tells you the size of food to go. And, 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 and its growth potential in food to go. The only thing that stopped it uh, in the very beginning was the pandemic, but now that has really shot forward because people realize we still like to eat restaurant food. We don't wanna cook at home. And, but the number here that gets me the most, I'd like you to point is the number 82. It says 82% of consumers order food delivery to their home. Holy cow, 82%. So your target market for people to enjoy your food is actually unlimited, except for the fact that you got a location, people got to get the food home. So you're not going to get calls from 100 miles away. All right, 82%. If this does not inspire you to strongly consider how you package your food to go, Maybe after this presentation, it will. Uh, I have to ask you, do you trust Uber and DoorDash to get your product there safely? Do you trust them? Do you trust your own staff sometimes, if you have your own delivery system, to get it there the way you want, intend to have your food consumed? Do you really trust your customer to operate and to use the uh, packaging you have uh, the way it should be used? Your container is the last control that you have before it leaves your restaurant. After the, rest, after the container leaves your restaurant, 
you're you're wishing against all get out that they're going to like the food and that it shows up properly. The container is very very important, and I think the anchor container is a great answer to reduce the risk of unhappy customers. You want that phone to ring. You want that reorder. By the reorder, you're getting revenue. Okay. So until it's become so important, perhaps you viewed uh, packaging as a cost. Yeah, I got a great dining room, but people still want to eat at home. I wish they'd come here to eat, but people want to go out. So here's my food in a container. And sometimes the thought process for that container was based on cost only, not on performance. Um, now, performance of the container is very important because you're depending on the reorder. You're depending on the least amount of risk with that container at the customer's house, okay? Uh, so hopefully, the container is now being thought of as the most important part of an enjoyable, repeatable food experience. Let me say that again. The container is now the most important part of a repeatable, enjoyable food experience. Repeatable might be the most important of those um, of that of that last statement. Okay. Without a doubt, for the next six months, packaging is the smallest investment you can make to ensure a steady stream of revenue. I'll say that again. Packaging is the smallest investment you can make to assure a steady stream of revenue, okay? So let's talk about the silver lining. What is the silver lining? How can this be good? You know, people are getting sick. People don't go out, everybody's gotta wear a mask. People are telling you, you know, uh, government officials are telling you, you can have 25%, you can have 50%. Oop, we're up above 5% on uh, the cases, so you're down to 25%. Oh, and by the way, we also live in the Midwest. And much like Game of Thrones, I got news. Winter is coming. <laughs> okay. If you have an outdoor patio, great. But winter is coming. Most people on Game of Thrones knew what they were talking about. Okay. So if you do it right now, if you do it properly now with your packaging, and if you assure your customer of the best experience they can have in a carry out situation. Think of, let's say after 2021, let's say 2022 is gonna be our best year since 2019 or two, yeah, 2019, okay? Think if your dining room, cause people are gonna rush back once, once this is conquered, this, this is a pandemic. People are gonna rush back. But at the same time, you've had the opportunity to introduce to your customers, pardon me, and to more customers and more people your food and have done properly, they're gonna to wanna to see what you're all about, okay? They're gonna to wanna to repeat, so your dining room is going to be full. Your carryout packaging will be thriving. I'm a, I'm a full, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a large believer in positive things, okay? The pandemic is bad now. But if done, if, if you can do one thing properly, and that's provide great carry out experience, when the dining room is open full time again and the bar is open full time again, everything uh, is gonna come back to you, only you're gonna have a better carry out situation. That is, uh, that, that is something to look forward to and something to, to, uh, to uh, be very positive about, okay? Um, let's talk about the containers. I, I think if you signed up soon enough for this, uh, we sent you a, a, a bevy of containers. I think there were nine containers in all. Um, I, obviously, Anchor has a lot more than nine containers, okay? In every group of containers we send, or in every shape, we have variations of that container. Um, that container is going to uh, carry uh, entrees. It's gonna carry full meals going to carry 
appetizers and specialty packaging. So, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe a, maybe the same container can do pasta and the same container and the same container can do fried wings. Okay. Um, uh, or, or appetizers. All right. Uh, we have salad containers. We have side containers for stews, soups, comfort foods. All right. So if you're looking at these containers now, if you have them with you, and I'm, I'm not going to ask you to take them out or anything, but, it, but, it, but if you look at all we've sent you, you got like nine containers. If I came to visit you and said, you need nine containers to succeed, I'd expect you to throw me out of the building. Okay. Our goal, the Hody Group's goal and the Trimark Marlin goal is to help you see your way through from three to five different SKUs of containers to package 80% of your menu, okay? Three to five. And they're in there somewhere, okay? And we would bring in a, in a, uh, in a personal meeting with you, we would bring other, you know, probably a box full of containers and let you look through, have you look through, okay? But our goal is to make it simple, keep it simple and still protect the quality of the food and get the repeat business. You get the repeat revenue, okay? Again, when the stores open up, you get the dining room, you got a great carryout business, the silver lining. We need to address it like it's a concern now because it is, okay? You need to do, I, I believe you need to do your best job for the people who wanna call your phone and order out, okay? Um, I wanna do a demo. Well, first of all, I'm gonna show you something and I don't know with this, uh, Zoom deal. I'm going to take our uh, one of our. This is one of the containers that we sent out to you. It's our PET nine inch or nine. Yeah, I think it's a nine inch deep. This is for cold foods. Okay, um, you can and th this is how we get you from three from instead of nine three to five containers. This is a good salad container. I'm going to show you how the salad looks but it's also a good cold sandwich and a cold side container too. Okay, it's a good lunch container for other items as well. And variations of this can be used for smaller uh, offerings. Here's that container for a salad to go. Okay, there's the side, nine inch deep, salad to go. It's hinged. It's one skew, very, very clear, cold food, and it's stackable, okay? Um, the the uh, fitting uh, the the uh, lid fit is impeccable. All right, it travels very very well. I don't think Uber can screw it up. And I, you know, maybe somebody in your family works for Uber. I apologize. Okay, but I'm telling you that you have control until it leaves your building. Okay, so that's a salad in a smaller container, just like that. We have veggies for dips. Okay, and we have another, of course, we got a container for dips if you want to, okay? But we have, a, so this is a seven and a half inch deep container for dips. This is also a great, a great gourmet burger container if they're not gonna microwave it, but it's a great cold sandwich container as well, all right? Um, I'm not gonna go through every container that you have there, uh, but there is one thing at last that I wanna do before we close, okay? Uh, and hopefully have some questions from you. Matt talked about, Matt, uh, Matt Murray talked about the quality of the containers. And I'm talking about how important it is that the containers do their job for your customer once it leaves your building, okay? So I'm gonna do something and um, I hope you can see this. I'll explain it, then I'll show it to you. you doing? Rachel's moving things. Yeah, sure, okay, that's good, okay. So here I have ranch dressing. Okay, I'm gonna open this up. And here I have a container. It's our three compartment, this is a two piece. Uh, it's not in your, it's not in your uh, uh, package. Uh, um, it isn't the crisp uh, foods technology uh, form, but this is our three compartment, eight inch square uh, container, two piece. I'm gonna take this classic ranch dressing and I'm gonna squirt it, oh God, in there, okay? Um, Rachel hid the uh, French, but here it is. 
Then I have French dressing. And why am I putting two dressings in there? Well, I want to prove a point. We're going to put the French dressing in the next, oh God. Pardon me. Ugh. Okay, so we're putting the French dressing in the other cell. So now you can see I've got, oh, can you see better? Okay, I'm good. So, so, so that's that, okay? Uh, this is already a leaked in a little bit. I'm gonna put the lid on, okay? And Matt talked about that Tupperware fit. Okay, so be sure that's on the right way. I'll find out in a second. Okay, we're good, we're solid. There's the container. Watch what I do. Okay, and I'm gonna do it a few times. We're not afraid of this. Imagine what would happen if this hit the floorboard of a car, okay? Now, let it rest a little bit, okay? That's a little bit, and I'm gonna take this off. And do you see any white in the red or any red in the white? Absolutely not, okay? The package did its job. Um, on the way home or from the car to the house, they can drop it on the sidewalk. Um, if this was mashed potatoes and gravy and you had a vegetable on this side, nothing's gonna cross over, nothing's gonna touch into the entree section whatsoever. The food arrives the way it's supposed to arrive. Okay, uh, point made, I hope. Um, so our goal, uh, this is the end guys. I hope, hope there's some questions there. If not, that's okay. Our goal at the Hoodie Group, Anchor Packaging and Trimark Marlin is to get in front of you and meet you. Uh, this virtual stuff's pretty cool. Okay, but it's me looking at me and not asking you questions about your business and listening. Um, you may have specific needs for your business. So my goal is to get in front of you. If we get in front of you, we want to get you into a test of products. If you want to just start small and give us a salad container, or you want to say, you know what, I want to try three to five containers, and uh, we will do that at our expense. Okay, anchor products will, uh, anchor packaging will supply containers for you to, for you to, to, to do a carry out test to get 80% of your menu packaged and to your customers. I do highly recommend that when you do these tests, you put some kind of a sheet of paper that you print up at your place uh, in there, letting your customers know that you are trying to improve their experience. Can we get a response from you uh, what you think of the container that you're eating out of right now. Okay, what do you think of our food in that container? A long time ago, a very, very wise businessman once told me that when he wanted to know how he was being thought of and what about his products, he sent out back when mail was used, <laughs> those of you my age, he sent out a little three by five uh, postcard. Three words, how am I doing? That's what I'm asking you to ask your customers if you really want them to know that you're uh, trying to get better at their, at their dining experience, okay? How am I doing? By putting a little form with the package, this is totally up to you, but I will say this, if you get us in front of you to talk to you, and if you wanna maybe offer a free dessert for every one that comes back uh, with an answer on it, uh, or some kind of a discount, um, I would uh, come up with a way for us to uh, uh, share in that cost uh, to you, okay? Offer your customer something for helping you get better. Um, third, I wanna win your business. I wanna become your friend, I want you to become my friend. My best customers, our best customers are our best friends. Um, I really believe in Anchor Products. I really believe in Trimark Marlin. Really, really believe in Trimark Marlin. Those people are pros. Um, if they come in and ask you if you would see us, I would be honored to come in and uh, cross your door. Uh, we would uh, wear masks, do whatever we got to do, but I could ask you the right questions, okay? Um, that being said, that's what I have. I think I want to I thank Rachel. 
I want to thank Matt and uh, the guy with the, with the picture of himself, Nick Dietrolizzi, is who, who runs this whole thing. The guy's a wizard. Um, and, uh, but basically, I want to thank you guys for your time, uh, all, all you customers and Marlon reps. Um, I, um, I love what I do. I love what my company does. And I love what you guys do. This, this pandemic is not going to beat us, OK? Uh, there's a silver lining. So that being said, thank you all. And I'll send it over to Nick if there's any questions. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Jack, uh, just uh, really quick, thank you all. Um, we did have one question just come in at the tail end um, from a gentleman by the name of Larry Kirsch. Uh, his question is, what should we say to customers who want to see recycled containers? They see plastic as bad for the environment. What would you, your responses be? And maybe just jump in individually, guys. Uh, I, I've never been asked that, Matt. So I'm trying to understand, so what would you say to customers who want to see recycled containers? Um, you know, I, I would say, I mean, our product is recyclable, um, eligible for curbside recyclable, and it's recyclable number five. Um, so our, our products um, are deemed recyclable. So it's, if it's thrown away properly, it's going to get uh, repurposed um, to, to many things out there that we use plastic for. So there's, there's a wide variety of, of products that are used once we recycle and use that grind. Um, hopefully that answers your question. And I understand that you know, a plastic um, has a, a bad image out there, but if you look at the slides that Rachel um, put up there and the amount of water um, it, that takes to use uh, to make a pulped container, the amount of energy, um, and, and plastic doesn't use that much. So our carbon footprint, and also when you look at imported product, you know, you think about, you know, 90 days on a boat. Um, so, and, and we've done a lot of things at, about as far as reducing that carbon footprint by our two-piece containers, um, removing the 40% of the resin out, putting calcium carbonate in it, which is a mineral, um, to also reduce that too. So, um, all in all, plastic is, is a green choice. You know, some customers just really hold true to that fact that um, plastic is, is not a good alternative, but in today's day and age, that's what's performing in this whole home delivery um, uh, search. Plastic containers hold food the best and they maintain the, the temperature um, and the quality when it gets to the home is, is superior than other substrates. So hopefully that answered your question. I know it was a long answer there. Anybody else? I don't see any other questions. So if you guys would like to close us out, uh, I think we've reached the conclusion of our webinar. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Robert Bell. Thank you so Call much. Right now. All righty. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thanks for your time. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.